Acetaminophen is the active ingredient in Tylenol. Write the molecular formula and empirical formula of the compound. So the molecular versus the empirical formula, what's the difference? Well, they're, they're both chemical formulas. The molecular formula is used for molecular substances, substances that are made up of molecules, and the molecular formula just shows the exact number of atoms of each element in the smallest unit of the substance, which is the molecule. So all you do with the molecular formula is you say, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So we'll say C8. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hydrogens. So we'll say H9. There's one nitrogen and there's two oxygens. So that's the molecular formula of acetaminophen or Tylenol, C8H9NO2. What about the empirical formula? What's the empirical formula? The empirical formula is strictly showing you the ratios of the different atoms present in any substance, not just molecular. To get the empirical formula of acetaminophen from the molecular formula, which we have, we would just simplify the subscripts to the simplest or, or smallest whole number values. So like, for example, C2H2. If this was a molecular formula, then the empirical formula would be CH. If you had H2N2O4 was the molecular formula, then the empirical formula would be HNO2. This is just indicating, okay, in C2H2, you have one part carbon to one part hydrogen. In H2N2O4, you have one part hydrogen to one part nitrogen to two parts oxygen. But this molecular formula is already fully simplified. So in this case, the molecular and empirical formulas are the same. In acetaminophen, there's eight parts carbon to nine parts hydrogen to one part nitrogen to two parts oxygen. Now, what's the purpose of the empirical formula? Well, for a certain molecular substance, it might be the case that you don't know what the molecular formula is, but you do know the ratios of the different elements present. So you know the empirical formula. Another purpose of the empirical formula is for substances that aren't molecular, like ionic compounds, for example, or metals. These substances form lattice structures. There are no discrete molecules. So for the case of aluminum oxide, for example, it would make no sense to write the chemical formula for aluminum oxide as Al6O9, because then why not write it as Al12O18? It's an infinite lattice structure, so it only makes sense to write the empirical formula for this substance. Two parts aluminum to three parts oxygen. 